So uh, my name's Phil, and um, I'm the only thing standing between you and lunch. So uh, let's do this, right? I did found uh, BoatRx with my business partner, Lexi, over there. We're a Boston-based company. And we design and install these modern battery-powered air conditioning systems. Um, and we provide them for boat yards, dealers, and, and new builders. And Randall, of course, asked me to come and talk about the changes that are coming to the marine industry. And Elsa mentioned it, and I think one of the biggest ones is the shift to electrification. And in the marine industry, you know, we often ride on the heels of the automotive industry. We're often making this comparison to say like, oh, the marine industry is five to 10 years behind automotive. So if you look at cars, that's where boats are going, right? And in the car business, there's, it's undoubtable that we're shifting to electric vehicles. Many of you might already have an electric car, you might know someone who does. You might already have solar panels on your roof, or your neighbor does, or you might have a backup battery for your house. I mean, electrification is coming to every market. And these electric cars, they're amazing, right? We have cars that'll do 300 miles on a single charge, and Tesla's saying that in a few years they'll be able to double that. So then, if boating's right behind the cars, where are all the electric boats? I mean, I do believe they're coming, but we have to look at the physics of it, right? I mean, a boat is fundamentally different than an electric car. With a car, the electric loads are really high when you go to accelerate and get up on the highway, but once you're at highway speed, you back off on the gas pedal a little bit, right, to maintain your 55 miles an hour, you know, because you all travel the speed limit, I'm sure. But in a boat, when you start approaching your cruising speeds, the loads and the resistance on the hull stay continuously high. And so this means that for a given battery size in a boat, the range of that boat is gonna be really limited. But there's one other really big thing I wanna focus on that's the difference between electric cars and electric boats. And that's something that a lot of boats do, especially for a weekend and long distance cruisers. There's something that a boat provides that a car just doesn't. And that's all the comforts of home. So now for an electric boat, not only do we need to propel the boat through the water at very high resistance, but we also need to keep it air conditioned. We need to keep the galley fridge and freezers on. We need our electric stove, our ovens, our water makers, our hair dryers, our toasters, all of these electrical loads. So there's obviously a much bigger challenge in electrifying boats. Now, if you wanna use your electric boat and you wanna go uh, you know, charge it up at the dock, go boating for a couple hours, come back to the dock and recharge the boat, well then I think that's a great application. So I'm not saying that electric boats aren't coming, but they don't apply to every aspect of our market. And uh, Elsa also mentioned the shoreside infrastructure. And I'm not personally seeing a lot of investment in electrical boating infrastructure being made in marinas in Massachusetts right now. I hope it's coming in the future, but we gotta know that like, these things have to happen in tandem, right? We can't have electric boats without the ability to charge them. So let's look at those house systems, right? Since boats are really like floating houses for a lot of new boat buyers, what are the things that use the most power on board? Well, if you consider most new luxury boats, both power and sail, most of them are air conditioning, are air conditioned, and that air conditioning uses more power than anything else on the boat, partly because it's in use all the time. So traditionally, where do we get this power? Well, any of you who work on boats, you know that we use diesel generators when the boat's not plugged into shore power. The thing about these diesel generators, this is the way we've done it for decades, I mean, air conditioning on boats isn't new, and all these appliances, they're not new. But the thing about these diesel generators is they have to be running all the time to power those loads, those electrical loads. And the other thing is that the generator has to be sized to have enough output, enough electrical power to power everything in the boat when, they're all, when everything's turned on and turned up to 11, right? So the generator essentially has to be oversized to power all those things at once. The thing is, you've got this big generator that you just installed in the boat so you can power everything, and you're running it 24-7 to keep the boat air-conditioned. But the reality is, most of the time, you're not using all of those appliances at once. You're not, you're not maxing out that generator 100% of the time. I mean, consider your use case when you're sleeping. You're out at anchor, you've got your generator on, and the air conditioning is, is kind of cycled down. It's not in use as much, the sun's down, you're not doing anything else. So now you're using a really small amount of that generator's power. 
And here's the thing about diesel engines. If we only use a small amount of the power that it's capable of producing, that engine is really inefficient. And this is what this chart's showing. On the left side, you can see the chart starts up really high, consuming a lot of fuel for the amount of power that's produced. So when the generator is underloaded, we have a lot of things. On average, boat owners are paying between $3 and $9 per kilowatt hour generated under these low load conditions. These are crazy numbers. Because you might as well, right? The generator's on, so now it's a good time to cook in the galley, blow dry your hair, run the air conditioning. But this is teaching us to use more power than we need. This existing generator-based system design is telling boat owners, the generator's on, use power. I mean, can you imagine if you did that in your house? You flipped on the lights of the living room, then you went around and turned on everything in the house. Use a microwave, started making some toast, started cooking in the oven. I mean, that's not how electrical power is supposed to work, right? Now, there's this really boring looking machine on the screen. This is here to show you that it gets even crazier. Since these generators need to be loaded properly all the time, otherwise they're really inefficient and, and it damages the generator, on the big yachts, we use these things called load banks. This little machine here, all it does is heat up the seawater so you can discharge it overboard. This is what they put on big yachts to keep the generators happy. Doesn't sound right, does it? I mean, I think if you told your friends outside of the marine industry about this, they'd be like, what are you guys doing? So you might be catching the hint that I'm not a big fan of constant running generators. And this is the age of electrification, right? So I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, oh, I'm here just to tell you, hey, put in a big battery bank, turn out the generator and call the problem solved, right? I mean, everybody knows lithium technology is, is dramatically improved and is you know, making it possible for all these new types of systems. But see, it's not just about the battery. If we want to run our house loads from battery power, we need to start in thinking about increasing the efficiency of our onboard systems. We need to use less power if we want to draw from batteries, because all of a sudden we don't have power to waste. The way we do it now is we have power to burn. Put more fuel in, burn more fuel, use more power. When we put it in our batteries, we're like, well, we, we got to recharge them, right? So we want to increase the efficiency of the biggest consumers like air conditioning. And then with this big lithium battery bank, we need to have a way to quickly recharge it when we're not on the dock. And so there are two great options for doing this. The first one is the one time it makes sense to use a generator. We use a generator to rapidly recharge the battery systems by pairing the generator with a powerful battery charging systems that can maximize the value of the generator by using its full output all of the time it's running rather than running it all the time with varying electrical, electrical loads. So now this is the same chart, but we move to the right side of the chart. We're in the most efficient part of the operating curve of the generator by loading it properly all the time. And now in a properly designed system, we could have, say, the air conditioning running 24 hours a day, but we're actually only running the generator maybe three to four hours a day to recharge the battery bank. The other way to do it is with modern high output alternators that are put on your, your main engines. This is an example of something called the Integral System. It's an eight kilowatt alternator. It's really powerful, um, but it's also done at higher DC voltages. So um, new boats, we're, we're talking a lot about 48 volt systems uh, rather than the traditional 12 volt systems. So I wanna just highlight that we used to think it was impossible to air condition a boat without a generator, but now we can. And with each year that goes by, more of your customers are moving to these electrified products. Even the fuel thirsty power boaters, they want this luxury of being able to turn off their generator for nighttime air conditioning. And it's not just me that's saying this. Uh, you know, this is, these are new concepts, but they're being picked up. I mean, the biggest boat builders in the world are uh, responding by producing boats today that have these lithium battery and hybrid powered systems that are installed from the factory. You're gonna start seeing these boats appear in your yards and in your dealerships. So finally, I wanna remind you that this shift to electrification is driven by consumer demand. And if you haven't experienced it yet, your customers are gonna start expecting this technology in their boats. 
And part of adapting to these technological changes is becoming fluent and talking about energy on board and anticipating the shift to more complex and more efficient electrical systems. Thanks, everybody. Now it's lunchtime. Yeah, if there's any questions, happy to take a couple. All right, we got one, we got one. How many kilowatt hours are your batteries in that hybrid genset model? Well, it, it has a big range, you know, it depends on the type of boat and what the air conditioning loads are. So our process, really quickly, is that when we're designing a battery system, the first thing we look at is what is the interior volume of the boat, what are the materials it's built of, and how much glazing is there, how much glass is there to let sunlight in. We calculate the heat load that comes into the boat so we can calculate the air conditioning load. When we understand the air conditioning load, we can extrapolate what, how much power it uses on a daily basis, and then we ask the customer, hey, how long do you want to be able to run on battery power? Is it 24 hours? Is it four hours? A lot of times it's overnight, so it's 12. Uh, once we know that, then we calculate the battery bank size. And uh, with the battery bank size calculated, we then say, okay, we have this much battery. How fast do we need to be able to charge it to do it in a reasonable amount of time? And that also determines how big the generator is. So the, the short answer is it depends. Um, and there's a few calculations that go into it. And you got to get them right. And that's a part of adapting to, to this new way of thinking. It's not just putting some random components together, but just making sure they all, they all match. Cool. Thanks, everybody.